Hey guys, welcome. I'm so excited that you are here. This is our Bug Off Essential Oils for Lyme Disease Support class, and I am Dr. Laura Ritchie. We have a lot of new members here, so I just wanna introduce myself for those that are new. I have a doctorate in physical therapy, that is my background. I'm also a certified women's health and functional nutrition coach, and I'm taking a nutritional endocrinology practitioner training program currently right now to just learn more and more about functional nutrition and health. And I'm an essential oil educator and leader with doTERRA International. So I'm so glad that you guys joined us here or if you're catching the replay, welcome to the replay of our class. Even though this is gonna be more specific for supporting people with Lyme, this is really information that can help everybody. So even if you don't have Lyme, I would really recommend that you stay tuned, watch the information in this class because we're gonna be talking about things for overall health, like detox and sleep support and just supporting your overall body. So this is really, really important information and it's something that's really near and dear to my heart because I was diagnosed with Lyme back in 2015 and we really think I was undiagnosed for about 11 years so I was having a lot of really strange symptoms daily headaches frequent migraines nerve pain pelvic pain which can actually be an issue with Lyme a lot of fatigue nobody could really figure out what was going on with that and I actually read an article that my mentor or Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo shared in the Institute of Nutritional Endocrinology Facebook page and it talked about a girl who was struggling with all of these different issues and it turned out to be Lyme. So I went and got tested and that's actually how I found out that I uh, was diagnosed with Lyme and kind of went on this healing journey related to that. So it's something that's very personal for me. It's something that I have struggled with and really have worked so hard over the several past years on supporting my health and something that I do with my private health coaching clients as well. And really we should just kind of start off by talking about what Lyme disease is. So Lyme is a bacterial infection that we typically associate as being transmitted by deer ticks. The CDC has estimated that 300 thousand, 300,000 people are diagnosed with Lyme in the U.S. each year. And that's one and a half times the number of women who are diagnosed with breast cancer and six times the number of people diagnosed with HIV or AIDS. So this is a big issue, guys, and I really think that Lyme is going to become more and more mainstream. We're hearing more and more about it, and I think it's going to be kind of the new epidemic of our generation. So it's really good to be prepared and be educated about this. So there are actually over a hundred different strains of Borrelia in the United States. So Borrelia burgdorferi is the bacterial infection, that part of Lyme. And what's really interesting is there's more than 300 worldwide. So Lyme is a worldwide kind of global issue. And oftentimes doctors will say, well, we don't have Lyme in our area. That is completely false. Lyme is everywhere, okay? These bacterial infections know no borders. So that's good to be aware of. And researchers now believe that mosquitoes, deer flies, black flies, horse flies, fleas, and lice can transmit Borrelia burgdorferi. Deer, birds, mammals, and rodents can also be carriers of Lyme. So this is really, really important and something to take into consideration as well. It's not just deer ticks, guys. This is other things that can be transmitting this. Research is also showing that it can be sexually transmitted. So Lyme, the spirochete, is actually very similar to syphilis, so that it can be sexually transmitted and can be transmitted from mother to baby during pregnancy. So there are many ways that Lyme can be transmitted that we can get that, and this is really, really important to know because I don't think there's a whole lot of people talking about this. And Lyme is known as the great imitator. So it's very sneaky. It's a very smart bacteria. It's pleomorphic, which means that it can take on different shapes at different times and adjust as the result of its environment, how it changes. So it's very smart. It makes it very tricky to treat and to go after because it can change shapes and do all of these things. And really guys, only 30% of Lyme sufferers develop a bullseye rash. 
So this again is very, very important that only 30%. So there's a lot of people that could get bit by a tick and not know it. And so this is why it's really important to spread education around this. And also that Lyme is a clinical diagnosis. I think that's something that's really, really important to point out too. So in other words, you have seen all these other doctors, you've done all this other stuff and they can't really figure out what's going on. It could be Lyme. Now, Lyme is often misdiagnosed as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, all of these different things, um, even Parkinson's. So Lyme is very, very tricky. It can be misdiagnosed as lots of other things. Personally, that's what I was told, was that I had chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and there wasn't really anything that they could do for me turned out to be Lyme. So this is very, very important to just have this information. It is kind of a political thing. Unfortunately, there are some insurance companies that are going after physicians that are treating chronic Lyme. There's this kind of divide between um, the CDC regulations and the testing can be really complicated. And there's kind of two camps, the IDSA, which says that Lyme is really hard to get, easy to treat, and if you're still having symptoms after treatment, that's just regular ADLs, which is kind of crazy in my opinion. And then we have ILADS, and ILADS stances that Lyme is actually easy to get, hard to treat, and that chronic Lyme can be a real thing. So. This is very complicated. I would encourage you to do your own research as well. And that's kind of what I did to kind of figure out what was going on. Um, but I truly believe that I probably had Lyme for about 11 years. And I think that that's what compromised my immune system and made, it, made me more susceptible to actually getting cancer and sarcoma later in life. And so just things to be aware of, very, very important. So what are the symptoms of Lyme disease? Well, there's a lot, because again, it's the great imitator. So this could be fatigue. This could be migrating joint and muscle pain, tingling, numbness, burning sensations, a stiff neck, headaches and migraines, light and sound sensitivity, difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep, it could be memory or concentration problems, even in some people, chest pain, abdominal pain. And oftentimes a telltale sign of Lyme is that you have these good and bad days or that your symptoms get worse around your cycle or even for some people around the full moon, which could be an issue with parasites. So Lyme is tricky and it's often a multi-systemic issue where oftentimes people don't just have Lyme, there are co-infections, so Bartonella, Babesia, Auricula, all of these other things, and often there's other things going on as well. So underlying thyroid issues, underlying adrenal insufficiency, underlying blood sugar issues. So Lyme may be an issue going on, but there could be other things going on too with that. And Dr. Richard Horowitz, he is kind of the guru, one of the top leading world experts in Lyme disease. And he kind of describes it like if you had 10 nails in your foot and Lyme might be one, okay, that's one to address. But if you still have food sensitivities or blood sugar issues or issues with your thyroid, your foot's still gonna hurt, right? Because we have these other nails. So it's all about getting to the underlying root cause. And for me, what I've noticed in my body is it's almost like, Lyme forces us to take care of ourselves in a way that we all should, but it's almost to an nth degree because if I don't eat the way I'm supposed to, if I don't eat a clean diet, if I don't get enough sleep, if I don't really practice those self-care techniques, I feel really, really crummy. So this is just good information to kind of keep in mind and really good information for everybody with this. Now, the testing is really, really tricky, guys. It can be complicated. Again, it is in clinical diagnosis, which means that there really is no perfect test for Lyme disease, but there are two labs that I really like. So typically they will do a Western blot or an ELISA. Like if you go to your doctor and just ask your you know, family doctor for a test, but those are very oftentimes miss people because they're not very sensitive tests. So what I would recommend is actually iGenix or iSpot. These are going to be much more sensitive, better tests for Lyme, but it's also very important to remember, again, it's a clinical diagnosis. So I really encourage people to search out and find a Lyme literate medical doctor in your area. 
And there's a website, again, ILADS, and it's ILADS.org. It stands for the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. And they have a little place on their website where you can search for a practitioner in your area. And these are in people, people that take a functional approach with you that really look at the whole picture. This is so, so essential. And I have a Lyme literate medical doctor who's helped me a ton along my healing journey, and it has been huge. So that's just a little bit about what Lyme is, what the symptoms are with that, why it's kind of tricky, how people are often misdiagnosed, why it's important to kind of be aware of those things. And we're gonna keep it pretty simple, but I do encourage you to really do your education, do your research to look into this. There was a really amazing chronic Lyme disease summit that just came out, and I believe it's still available for purchase. So if you missed it, you can still get a hold of this really valuable information, the transcripts, all of that stuff, and I'll post a link to that too because I really think it's important for us to be educated because a lot of doctors are not, unfortunately, and I do believe that this is becoming a more bigger problem and something that we need to be aware of. So we're gonna focus today's class really on essential oils and how they can support you and support your healing journey if this may be something that you are struggling with. But like I said, really, this is information that is going to help everybody across the board with this. I do preface that quality matters, just like we know with quality with our supplements, with our organic food. I was actually just doing a lecture for some doctoral physical therapy students at the Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center yesterday, talking to them and showing them the research as to why it's so important to get high quality food like organic meat and produce and things. So just like that, the same thing and same rules apply to our essential oils because there is no governing agency that regulates the quality and the therapeutic value of the oils that we're using. So everything that we're talking about in this class is really just to pertain to doTERRA. doTERRA is the oils that I know, love, and trust. They're certified pure therapeutic grade, and after a lot of research, they're the oils that I decided to go with. So I just wanna say that, that you're not gonna get the same effects if you buy essential oils from Walmart or Bed Bath & Beyond and try to do this. And in fact, I actually don't recommend that you put those oils topically on your skin because these are absorbed into your bloodstream. Often they're adulterated, contaminated. So I'm talking about pure, therapeutic grade oils for medicinal use with this to support us. So I just wanna preface with that. There's a really great book that I wanted to share with you guys called The Essential Life Book. And this is a book that I actually gift to my new oilers when they get started. But in here on page 261, there's a whole section on Lyme disease. So it's here, it's right there listed in the immune and lymphatic section. And there's some great, great information in this book, some great recommendations, protocols, things to help people. So I want you to kind of keep that in mind and we'll be talking about a few of those too, but that is a really, really great resource. I love that book, absolutely, Robin. That book is what we call our essential oil Bible. It is so amazing. So there are some really great recommendations specific for Lyme in that book. So I definitely recommend that you check it out. And here's the tricky thing, again, that, oh, I'm so glad, Lori, yeah, it's, it's the best book, we, we love it. And Lyme is so tricky, right? And I was having a lot of issues and a lot of random symptoms that were coming on that nobody could kind of piece together. So we're gonna talk about some of my favorite oils and how I use them, but we're also gonna talk about oils for sleep because sleep is a huge thing. And honestly, guys, sleep is number one. If you are struggling with Lyme or any other health issue for that matter, you have to have to sleep. Your body has to be able to get sleep before you can recover. It actually even helps with inflammation of the brain. So this is really, really important. So Mara, the name of the book, it's called The Essential Life Book. It's really great and I, I highly recommend it. Awesome, awesome resource. So sleep is essential, we have to start with sleep. Really, really important. Um, and here's the thing, guys. I was getting horrible head and neck tension, horrible headaches all the time. Sometimes they were so bad that I would see an aura and I would um, get nauseated and be sensitive to light and sound and really, really bad stuff. So for me, past tense is my go-to oil for that. So it is really, really amazing for any kind of head and neck tension. Guys, this is a game changer for me. I was having these awful, awful headaches, very debilitating ones, maybe five times a week. And now with completely changing my diet 
and getting rid of those food sensitivities. Maybe I get two a month now, so it completely changed my quality of life and how I'm able to function. And this goes with me everywhere. I have this at home and also in my purse. And when I feel it coming on, I just apply it over the temples, the forehead, the neck, um, here, the sternocleidomastoid muscle right along here, the scalenes, and then also suboccipital areas. So right at the base of the skull and the back of the neck, it is amazing. So if you are struggling with that because headaches, things like that are really, really common, I highly recommend this oil. It was a game changer for me, helped me personally. Absolutely, Robin. Yeah, we take it with us everywhere. It's so good. Balance is another one of my favorite oils and one that I use personally a lot. So Balance is the grounding blend. It is really, really great for supporting anxious feelings. It really helps to kind of stabilize your mood as well. And this can be really important because if you're dealing with a challenging health condition like Lyme or cancer or any of these things, it is really important to also work on our emotional health and well-being too. So I actually start the day every day putting a drop or two of this on the bottoms of my feet and it really, really helps. Oh, Lauren, that's so fantastic. Wow. So yeah, I'm so glad that that helped you. That is amazing. And yeah, it's, it's so great. It's such an amazing oil. It's one of my favorites. DDR Prime. This actually comes in an oil and also comes in a soft gel. So just this is just for convenience to take it internally. You can do a lot with this. So DDR Prime helps to protect the body against oxidative stress and really helps to support your cellular DNA. So this is really important, especially when we're dealing with big time health challenges, things. This is a really great oil. I actually apply it over my thyroid for thyroid support every day to the bottoms of my feet. It's a really, really nice one to just have to support you, especially if you're struggling and you need some support with um, some big gun type things like autoimmune support, viral support, things like that to just kind of help you. DDR Prime is a really, really great one and I really love that oil. For me, I was getting a lot of numbness, tingling, nerve pain in my arms. As a physical therapist, we thought it was thoracic outlet syndrome or issues, but it actually turned out to be a neurological symptom related to the Lyme. And I was having a lot of pain and we had tried different prescription medications. They actually made it worse. They weren't helping me at all. But what's really interesting is when I started having that numbness and tingling and pain, I could apply some wintergreen and use that and apply that to my arms and just have that actually, for me, it was right along that ulnar nerve distribution. So I could apply some winter green all along that ulnar nerve and up and within 10 minutes, I was better. Oh, hey, Hillary, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, so this was a game changer for me. Winter green was just amazing, I cannot tell you. And that was what was really astounding to me and what was kind of interesting was that I could take an oil and apply it. And those of you that are dealing with Lyme know that you're probably on a laundry list of supplements. You probably have tons of supplements. Your whole countertop is probably covered. And it's really refreshing to not have to take another thing internally and just apply something topically and use that. I will say wintergreen is one of the warmer oils, so you can dilute that and kind of have that on hand and use that. But for me, it worked really well. I actually just do it neat what I found, but um, dilute it, especially if you have sensitive skin, but that's another one that can be really great. Digestin, oh my gosh, guys, so anything digestive, any kind of bloating, upset tummy, issues with that, this is a really great oil. So oftentimes, and this was the issue with me, was I had a lot of things going on. So I may have head and neck tension, I may be feeling kind of nauseous and have a lot of things and I could put an oil on my head, an oil along my arm, an oil on my tummy, like digest then, and get relief. And maybe I would smell a little interesting. <laughs> Actually, a lot of people are like, you smell really good, which is great, right? But I could apply those to different areas. I didn't have to worry about, oh my gosh, is this gonna interact with that? Is this gonna be an issue? And I would get relief, which was really, really great and amazing for me. So that was a huge thing and a huge piece for me.
There is the metabolic blend. It's slim and sassy, and this can really help to support energy, to support weight loss. So if you're struggling with that, that could be something that you could put a drop or two in your water and drink that throughout the day, or just put it directly under your tongue. Or if you're struggling with sugar cravings, because oftentimes two people with Lyme are dealing with a candida overgrowth or something else going on too. And we all know that sugar is not good for us. Sugar doesn't help when we have a bacterial issue, a viral issue, things going on. So that could be a great way to support you as well with that, to do that. And then I also wanna point out Melissa because Melissa is just such an amazing, and it's a really beautiful oil. It was out of stock for a long time and we got it back and we were so excited. And it's a pricier oil. It's one of the pricier oils that we have, but it's particularly good at supporting your immune system, especially with really, really challenging things to support. Um, if you've got a high viral load to support that could be really great. And this is nice because oftentimes with Lyme, as we've mentioned, there could be other things going on. There could be HHV6, there could be um, cytomegalovirus, there could be Epstein-Barr virus, all of these other things. So things that can support our immune system, like Melissa, can be really, really amazing and just have on hand too. So I wanted to just highlight that oil, mention that too as well. Sleep, again, as I mentioned, I cannot tell you enough about sleep. Sleep is so, so important, especially for Lyme patients. We have to get you sleeping. We have to decrease the inflammation on the brain, all of those things. It's really, really important. Oh, Linda, I'm so glad that you like this lemon sassy. Yeah. Um, and sleep is really, really essential. So a couple things for sleep. One of the things, and, and what I've noticed personally for sleep is it's it depends, right? We did a whole class on sleep and there's a lot of different recommendations and things that you can try. Serenity is a really amazing oil and it works for a lot of people. It's got lavender, it's got vetiver, cedarwood, whole wood, some of these grounding oils. So that could be one that you could try applied topically to the bottom of your feet or diffusing that aromatically. Another one that you could try, a combo that tends to work really well. And this is one that was mentioned specifically in the Essential Life book for the Lyme support is vetiver and juniper berry which is another really, really great oil for sleep, and lavender. So doing this combination is really, really great to kind of have on hand, and you could try that as well. And you could put a couple drops on the bottoms of your feet. You could make a roller bottle with this blend. You could try different things. I, you could even add in like some wild orange to that, some frankincense. So again, bio-individuality, because we have to find which oils work best for you, but sleep is really important. And doTERRA does have the Serenity Soft Gels, which are amazing. They have L-theanine and amino acid. They have some calming herbs. They have lavender. So I personally take the Serenity Soft Gels and the Serenity oil and put that on the bottom of my feet to help too. Oh yeah, Hillary, thank you so much for sharing. That's a really great tip as well, that it's helpful to track your sleep and to see what's going on and see if that's helping you with that. So sleep essential, really work on that. It may take some time. I would actually recommend you know, going to bed early and ideally being in bed by 10 p.m. is going to be the best time for hormonal support, helping you to feel really rested. We're meant to be cyclical. So go to bed when the sun goes down, wake up when the sun comes up. That's really challenging guys with Lyme and when you don't feel good, but I have been able to, through a lot of practice and, and it took some time, get on a sleep schedule and I have noticed a huge improvement in energy and how I'm feeling overall when I did that and when I was using the oils to support me with that and help me with that. So there's a really great pain support roller blend and we're actually gonna make that really quick just so that you guys can see how quick and simple and easy it is to make a roller and use that to support you. So what we have here, um, these are the oils. Again, this recipe was from is from the Essential Life book. So we are going to be using lavender, balance, deep blue, rosemary, and lemongrass. Sorry, that lighting is a little bit interesting, but hopefully you guys can see that okay. So again, this is a great roller for pain, and this is a great roller for pain for anybody, so you can try this. So it is 10 drops of lavender. So we've got our lavender essential oil here. I love lavender. Lavender is the all things calm oil. So we're gonna do 10 drops. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One to grow on, there we go. So 10 drops of our lavender here. Next, I'm gonna grab balance, 
We're gonna do eight drops of balance oil. So the grounding blend that I mentioned before, I love this oil, guys. So eight drops here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have eight drops of deep blue. Deep blue is amazing. This is the soothing blend. It is so amazing for pain. It's one of my husband's favorite oils because he plays a lot of racquetball. But this is gonna be great and very supportive in here as well. So eight drops of deep blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're also gonna do six drops of our lemongrass. Where is our lemongrass? There it is, it was hiding from me. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is gonna be part of our giveaway. Somebody's going to be getting this roller, which is really exciting. So stay tuned to hear all about that. We have lots of goodies to give away today. And rosemary, which is another great one. So eight drops of rosemary. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what I love about using essential oils to support us is we can roll it topically, we can roll it to wherever we need to and have that on there to support us. And we're not taking more medications or things that can be really hard on the gut. So there we go, 10 drops of lavender, eight drops of balance, eight drops of deep blue, eight drops of rosemary, and six drops of lemongrass. Now we're just gonna to top with our fractionated coconut oil. I love the In Vivo fractionated coconut oil because it has a pump bottle here. So we're just gonna fill it up, easy peasy. Did not take us any time at all, just like that. And then we're gonna pop the roller on, like so. And then put the cap on, and there we go. That's our pain support roller blend that we have right there. So quick and easy, and you can just roll it right to wherever you need it. So you can apply it if you have any painful joints, you can apply it right there. You can put it on the bottoms of your feet several times a day as needed. And if you're getting benefit, you can reapply. So you can reapply your oils every 15 to 20 minutes as needed. And that's actually really great and a great tip. When you make rollers, it's already diluted. You're using less. You're saving our beautiful liquid gold. It's stretching your dollar. And it's really, really helpful. So those are just some tips too some other oils that you could apply, maybe make some roller blends, things like On Guard, because that's the protective blend, so it's really, really great for immune support. And if you're struggling with Lyme or another issue, you really want that immune support, you could add Melissa to it. We already talked a little bit about Melissa and all the benefits of Melissa there. Frankincense. Frankincense is an enhancer oil. It is amazing, so you can just kind of add that to different things, and that could be very beneficial and help. So all of these bottoms of the feet and the spine are great, great places to apply your oils. So here is a blend that I really love, and this was interesting, and I learned about it from the Essential Life book again, but it's Better Morning. And what you do is you do lemon and basil. So these two together are really great. It's a great combination and anybody can do this, but if you really struggle with getting up in the morning, morning time's really hard for you, what you just do is you just put just a drop of this. So one drop of each, one drop of our lemon and one drop of our basil, and you put it behind the ear. So behind each ear before you go to bed at night and then it just helps you have a better morning. It is amazing. I have tried this personally and it just works so well for me that I actually keep both of these oils on my nightstand like by my bed and I put a drop behind of each and it just really helps. So if you struggle with getting up in the morning, if that's a really hard time, which it is for a lot of Lyme people, that would be a great one to try. Just basil and lemon drop of each behind the ear and try it even without. If you're not a morning person, that would be great. Patchouli. This is another amazing oil. If you can put a drop or two on the bottoms of your feet and maybe do that twice a day, this is great for supporting your nervous system. And if you wanna enhance it even a little bit more, you could do frankincense with that and maybe even some wild orange with that and kind of do that combo, but patchouli alone is really great. But if you if your nervous system needs a little bit of support, try that combination, it's really great. Oh great, I'm so glad Robin and Linda and, and Pam, yeah, give it a try, give the basil and lemon a try. It is really awesome, it will just help you have a better day. I have noticed a huge difference since doing that and that's one of the beautiful things about essential oils is they're so concentrated that one drop goes a long way. So it's very, very handy with that. There are some oils that can help with internal support. 
with that. So these are gonna be some of the big gun oils that can help with supporting your immune system, supporting all of that. Um, oh, sorry, Rachel, I wasn't sure with that question. Uh, with the nerves, um, to support nerve, the nervous system and nerve irritation, that would be patchouli. Patchouli would be really great with that. So things like cinnamon and cassia and clove, there's so many guys, and, and it's interesting because Lyme is, is lots and lots of different symptoms and lots of different body systems that are affected. So literally, when I was bringing out my oils for this class, <laughs> I should show you guys a behind the scenes. It's like almost all of my products, almost all of my oils are here, and it is crazy. Oh yeah, Bonnie, absolutely, yeah. Patchouli is amazing. It is so helpful, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. Patchouli is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's an essential oil style t-shirt that says that that I really need to get. Um, Melaleuca, which is tea tree oil. Another one very supportive of the body. Oregano, we all have heard of oregano. This is the big guns heavy hitter for supporting your immune system, especially if you don't feel well going on with Lyme. Uh, thyme, it's time for thyme. Thyme is another great one as well. And Melissa, so those oils can be really helpful. So. Cinnamon, melaleuca, oregano, clove, thyme, cassia, melissa. These are all great. And I would start because a lot of these are hotter oils. So taking them internally in a veggie cap, the veggie caps are nice because you can actually just open them up. You can add a drop or two to whatever you need. Close that up. I usually will take these with food. You could add a little bit of, of a carrier oil into that if you wanted to and take that. And I recommend less is more. And again, this is bio-individuality. This is figuring out what works best for you. So start with maybe one drop, maybe do one of those oils. You could try a combination, but start slowly, see how your body responds because the oils are powerful and they're very concentrated and there could be a die-off reaction going on, a Herxheimer that's happening. So go slowly and see how your body's doing with that. That's really, really important. So there's really so many options with using the oils in different ways to help you and support you. I think it's also important to kind of talk about supplements as well. So you want to be on a really clean multivitamin, something that doesn't have any gluten or dairy. Again, you get what you pay for with organic food, with essential oils, and with supplements. So me personally, I do take doTERRA's Lifelong Vitality Pack. These are the ones that I like. I like that they do not have any cyanocobalamin, which is actually a synthetic form of B vitamins, it's derived from cyanide, we do not need that in our life, or it doesn't have any folic acid. Again, folic acid is a synthetic for folate. We want the methocobalamin, we want the methylated form of B vitamins, we want the folate, the natural form, because the body cannot be tricked, and especially with Lyme, often people may have an MTHFR SNP, these are some genetic little snips that can affect how our detoxification pathways and our methylation pathways are working on and folic acid is not good. It's very, very inflammatory. So read your supplements, look into that. See um, the Lifelong Vitality Pack, it's three supplements. So it has an overall whole food vitamin and mineral support. It's got the essential fatty acids in there and it also helps to support healthy cellular response and healing, which is really awesome. It has antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. So these are things that just can support you as well. I also really like the Zendocrine soft gels. So these are the detoxification blend and support. It's also in an oil and you could apply the oil over the liver, over the kidneys, bottoms of the feet, in an Epsom salt detox bath, or you could take these internally. It just helps to support detox. So there have been times where I'm feeling really yucky and maybe having a die-off reaction or Herxheimer's, and I could take one of these, um, similar to kind of, I also like activated charcoal or the binders too, and that can really help. Um, side note, I also really like coffee enemas big time. So look into those. You can do um, some research and kind of see a lot of the speakers on the Chronic Lyme Summit. We're talking about coffee enemas, but it's another thing that I like to do to support my body. I noticed a big difference when doing that. It's inexpensive. So definitely look into that as well. Uh, we talked a little bit about the DDR Prime soft gels earlier, but again, these are really great. They help to support and protect your body from those oxidative damages, um, promote cellular support. So this is really great, a great one to take as well. I take those every day too. I recently just did a cleanse and restore. So 
I like the GX Assist. This is another one that is really nice, especially to support you if you're dealing with um, candida or intestinal pathogens or things like that. Um, this is really, really a great one to have on hand and just support your GI system. Because again, as we mentioned, a lot goes back to the gut and there could be other things going on there. So I did a 30 day uh, restore and cleanse and you can even look for that on doTERRA.com, the cleanse and restore, and there's instructions on how to do that. And I noticed a big difference and felt better. So Shelly, yeah, it, there's both. DDR Prime comes in both. So the oil and the soft gels which is nice. So you could put the oil in a veggie cap and take it internally or put a drop in your water or the soft gels are just nice because they're already made up for us. So if you make a veggie cap and you put oil into the veggie cap, as we described earlier, you can't, you can't save it. You have to take it right away because that oil is going to get all messy and kind of break down. So that's the kind of the nice thing about um, and it's, it's nice that doTERRA has taken some of those oils that we use regularly, like the Zendocrine like the On Guard Plus, like the DDR Prime, to have those on hand. They're already made, so it's convenient for travel or if you can't make the veggie caps right away. So Shelly, the DDR Prime oil is out of, actually out of stock right now. And last I checked, it should be back in stock in another week or two. So keep checking in, that'll be back, <laughs> not to worry. And um, Terrazyme, so having some really good digestive enzymes. This is huge. And for me personally, I tried a lot of different digestive enzymes to help. So I tried orthomolecular designs for health. For me personally, I noticed a huge difference since switching to the Terrazyme. It was very, very helpful. I really love these digestive enzymes. And then also um, the PB Assist is the probiotic. So again, these are things like having a really good digestive enzyme on hand, having a good probiotic on hand is really essential and this is going to help everybody. Everybody um, could be using good things with that. So very helpful to kind of have on hand. Oh, Robin, I'm so glad that you're loving the Terrazyme. It's amazing, it really is. I noticed a big difference with it. So let's also talk about repellent sprays, like, right, how do we keep these ticks and bugs? Because we mentioned that, you know, mosquitoes, spiders, it's not just ticks that can transmit Lyme. So we have a couple options. doTERRA has the Terra Shield for us. It's the oil. They also have the spray that's in this 30 ml bottle. And I like that this is a bottle that is safe for your essential oils and it's plastic. And so it's lightweight and it's easy to carry around with you. My recommendation specific for ticks, cedarwood and geranium work really well, keeping the ticks at bay. The 30 ml outdoor blend spray, the Terra Shield spray, has cedarwood in it. It doesn't have geranium. So I would just add a couple drops of geranium, maybe five to eight drops of geranium to this to just kind of boost it up a little bit to help you if that was something that you were going to use. Yeah, so Linda, the Terrazyme blend, how you would take this is you would actually divide it with your meal. So you would take an enzyme, one enzyme, and usually about two or three. So I would eat like a third of my meal, take one, eat two thirds of my meal, take another, and take another as you're finishing it up. Digestive enzymes help to break down our food. So a lot of people don't uh, either make the digestive enzymes that they need, that their body needs to break it down so they need a little bit of help, or they're not producing enough hydrochloric acid in the stomach to help to break that down. So we actually are what we absorb. So it's really important. So as an example, um, if you are taking, if you're dealing with bloating, indigestion, upset stomach, burning after you eat, any of those things, constipation, diarrhea, anything, you could benefit from some support with the digestive enzyme, could be really helpful. Everybody has a little bit different digestive enzymes, but I really like this blend because it's a blend of several. I don't even know if you guys can see this really well, but um, you can go to doTERRA.com and see all of the things in this blend, but it's got protease, papillin, amylase, lactase, so lactase break down the, the lactose or the dairy, the sugar molecules there, um, cellulose, sucrose, um, betaine HCL, so it does even have some betaine HCL in here to help with hydrochloric acid and breaking things down in the stomach like we need. It's got an anti-gluten enzyme blend, which is really, really nice, but again, I, don't rec I would definitely recommend people stop eating gluten if you have any health issues, stop the gluten, stop the dairy, stop the sugar. 
Um, that would be my recommendation. And then what I love is it has doTERRA's tummy tamer in it. So peppermint, ginger, caraway seed, all of these things are gonna be really beneficial. So I think that's what makes doTERRA's um, Terrazyme really, really great. And you can definitely look up more information on doTERRA.com. They have the product information page that can give you lots more good information out of there too. So that is really, really helpful to just kind of have a good digestive enzyme. So um, back to bug sprays. So I actually like to make my own homemade bug spray as well. We have several different options. And you may find that one bug spray works better for your area. So you may like TerraShield or you may like TerraShield and add a couple things to it. So my bug spray regime is actually 10 drops each of lavender, peppermint, cedarwood, lemongrass, and geranium. And I just put that in a little glass spray bottle. So for one smaller like this, this is a one ounce, I would probably do about five drops of each. If I had a two ounce, I would go up to 10 drops each. Fill that with the essential oils, top off with your fractionated coconut oil, and then use that as a spray. And this is a great, great bug spray. It works really great for my area here in West Texas. And again, the cedar wood and the geranium work good to keep the bugs at bay. And just a little tip if you're making your own sprays, it can be helpful to put just some clear packaging tape over your stickers so they don't fall off and, and have some issues and that can be really, really helpful too and good to know. Um, so just good to have. A tick spray, so this could be really handy if you're going outside, you can spray down your pants, your shoes, any kind of exposed areas as well. So again, I do about five to 10 drops and you can play with this depending on how strong you're liking it, but geranium, cedarwood, lavender, and lemongrass makes a really nice tick spray. So I'll use the bug spray on any exposed skin and have that there, and then I do the tick spray on like shoes and pant legs and things like that too. And that can be really, really helpful too, to just kind of have, you could even diffuse this. You could take a diffuser outside if you were sitting outside and you could diffuse the lavender, peppermint, cedarwood, geranium, and lemongrass, just to kind of keep the bugs away. You could diffuse TerraShield. Again, play with it, see what works best for your area. But that's a really great idea too, is just to have your diffuser go in and keep the bugs and the things away and works really, really nicely. Linda, no, I, I don't believe that that one is in the Essential Life book, but I'm sure that they do have other recipes. This is just one that works for me, but I really encourage people to play, do your own research. There's lots of great recipes out there, um, but these are more specific for ticks with the geranium and the cedarwood and what has kind of worked best for me. So you can try them out and see what works best for you and for your area too. So again, I just want to encourage people, find a Lyme literate doctor. You can go to ilads.com, or sorry, ilads.org. So it's I-L-A-D-S.org. That stands for the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. Very, very important. Very, very important also, if you get bit by a tick, my recommendation, if you can save it, save the tick, they can actually do testing on that. You wanna take it off. You wanna ideally have tweezers, get as close as you can to the head of the tick, pull straight up. I have seen videos showing a drop of peppermint to get the tick off of the skin. I don't know about that because some people have told me that it actually will, the peppermint will kind of freak the tick out and it'll expel more of you know the bacteria and those co-infections and things into you if you do that. But it's also kind of hard to pull a tick off. Like those suckers can kind of stay on there. So if I couldn't get it off doing that, you know, I want to get it off and I may go to that. Ideally, I would say try to just get it off with the tweezers, get as close as you can, pull straight up, save that tick because you can get tested. And guys, I'm not a fan of using antibiotics for everything, but in this case, yes, go to the doctor immediately, get on doxycycline two weeks because with Lyme, you've got a short window with acute you know, getting bit to really nip that in the bud. So start the doxycycline immediately. You could put some lavender um, kind of over that area where the bite was, but remember only 30% of people that get bit by a tick actually get the bullseye. So this is where I do not mess around. Go get on an antibiotic immediately. We can always do some stuff to support gut health and things afterwards, but you do not want to mess around with this. No, no, no. So this is very, very important um, because when things start to progress and then we have a chronic Lyme situation, it is much, much harder to deal with um, and, and the symptoms are more challenging. Yeah, exactly, Robin. You do not want to mess around with Lyme. No, no, no. So 
that is where I would get in, especially if you're seeing ticks constantly. And this is where it's really important to pull, you know, do a body scan, check your children, get naked. Seriously, get naked. When you come inside, check all of the crevices, lime or lime. Ticks love to go into those little crevices between the toes, up in the scalp, in the hair, all of these places. So again, we don't want to come to this from a place of fear. That's why I like being empowered with these tools and having these things on hand. But just be cautious. Using your essential oils to support you, using your spray, checking for those things is really, really important as well to do that. There are some really great recommended books that I just wanted to show you um, really quickly. I really liked Healing Lines. So these are books that I've kind of checked out and used along my journey just for support. Um, I really like this one as well, um, Beyond Lyme Disease, because it takes a functional approach to this. And I'll, I'll post these in the, in the comments on the replay for you guys too here. Um, this book is amazing, Why I Can't Get Better, Solving the Mystery to Lyme and Chronic Disease. This is by uh, Dr. Richard Horowitz that I mentioned. It's amazing. He has some really great um, takes on functional nutrition, getting to the root cause with this. And I know it can be hard, like this is a thick book, guys, and it's very medical. I enjoyed it because of my background, but I even got the audio CD and I just listened to it in my car because sometimes with uh, with Lyme and things it can be hard to remember, hard to read. So you could just listen to that information. That could be really helpful. Um, this book is amazing, amazing. How to heal yourself when no one else can. I really, really like this book because it takes kind of um, an emotional approach. It talks about EFT. It talks about muscle testing, which I feel like is really, really important. And again, we want to look holistically with everything here. That's really important. Oh goodness, Lori. So Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, it is tough. It is tough. And so we're wanting to support our body in all of these different ways. Highly, highly recommend if you're dealing with any health issue that we look at dietary things. So the top seven food sensitivities, gluten, dairy, sugar, soy, corn, peanuts, and eggs. Um, but sometimes we need to dive deeper into that. So sometimes more of a paleo diet or Mediterranean diet, um, taking out the grains for a lot of people can be really helpful. It was for me specifically getting rid of the processed food, getting rid of the fast food, getting rid of the sugar. Um, alcohol is a trigger for a lot of Lyme people. For me, it brings on migraines. I feel really awful. Like I said, it kind of forces you um, to take care of yourself in a way that we're supposed to. Eating protein at each meal, eating more vegetables, getting more fiber, um, that's gonna be ideal. You know, fresh is gonna be ideal, but even frozen, if you can, would be good. Uh, doing lemon water in the morning, warm lemon water, or using your lemon essential oil for this can be very detoxifying. It very helps to support your digestive system. You could add a little stevia if you don't like the taste to that. Avoid plastic containers, avoid microwaves, warming up your food in microwaves and things like that. Um, increase your water intake, something just as simple as hydration, guys. Let's, let's all take a drink <laughs> together. Staying hydrated throughout the day. This is so, so important. Um, optimizing your sleep, probiotics, Epsom salt baths, coffee enemas, all of these things are so, so important. Upping your vitamin C, all of these things are, are really great. And movement, and this is hard, guys. Oh, movement's hard, especially when you feel crummy and you're having pain and all these things, but that may be a gentle Tai Chi class, a very gentle walk, um, Qigong, there's medical Qigong that works on breathing. All of these things can be really helpful supporting your liver. We talked about um, Zyndocrine and some of these things. Oh, Jamie, I'm so glad that you found me too. Yeah, absolutely. And these are things that I really dive in deeper in my private health coaching um, services that I do in my virtual health coaching. So I have private health coaching clients and we really work on these different areas. And I really suggest like one at a time, like maybe you work on sleep for a while, or maybe you work on your nutrition. And I just provide that accountability and we dive deeper and we kind of individualize things a little bit. Um, so we're kind of skimming the surface here with this class, but um, this is this is so important. Overall health and healing. Um, for the emotional piece, because I do think that that is really important. You guys have seen me talk about these books before. Heal Your Body by Louise Hayes is a really good one. Um, Emotions and Essential Oils, this is fascinating. Get this book, it is really, really great. Um, I love the I Am Fabulous book by Desiree Mangadog, it's really great as well. 
the healing questions guide. And this is really interesting, guys. There are some really interesting questions in here specific to Lyme. So let me see if I can pull them up really quickly and we can read through a few of them. Um, but this is interesting too. And this is part of going on this healing journey because it is a journey and going through when you're going through a health crisis like this, um, actually that's one of the reasons why I wore my little anchors today because an anchor symbolizes hope. And first of all, I'm so sorry if that's happening, if you're struggling, there's always, always hope. That's what I wanna kind of share with giving you guys holistic and other options and incorporating essential oils and emotional support with all of that, it's really huge. Um, but these are the questions specific for Lyme. So something to think about, it says, what value have I placed on believing I am the only one that knows how to do it right, so I have to take care of everything. What will it take for me to give up my need to run the show so I have more ability to focus on being more intimate, vulnerable, and emotionally connected? How would my life be different if I no longer entertained the idea that I will never be good enough? And what will it take to fulfill my need for validation and approval without expecting others to change? So this is really, really interesting. So the, the affirmation is, I allow others to learn imperfectly. Although I am continuing to increase in light and knowledge, right now I am good enough, smart enough, and capable enough. I do not need the approval of anyone outside myself. So this is really huge. These questions make you think. I like to journal on these. It's so deep, mind, body, soul, spirit, right? We wanna work on all levels, and especially with Lyme, with parasites, with some of these things, it's about establishing healthy boundaries, energetic boundaries. Like when we have viruses, bacteria, things taking over, um, it's like a parasite and there are energetic parasites. So this is a book that I've actually found too that's really helpful, Energetic Boundaries by Cindy Dale. I started reading this and like it as well. So just lots of tools in your toolbox, lots of things to kind of think about. Um, again, the Chronic Lyme Summit was amazing. It had so much great information. I will post that link if anybody wants to snag that to be able to go back and watch those talks over and over again. It's super helpful. And yeah, absolutely, Linda. It's all about working on those areas and getting to the to the cause of this. Oh, Lori, yep. Yeah. So this book with the affirmations and the questions, it's the Healing Questions Guide, and it's by Wendy Jensen. And I'll write all of these books out there too um, for you guys on the comments on the replay so that you have it. So that's really important. And I just wanna let anybody know if you're out there, if you are new to essential oils, please reach out to me. If you don't have an essential oil mentor or support, I would love to be that person for you. We provide a lot of mentoring, education, support. I have a private Facebook group just for our essential oil family. We have the replays of all of the virtual classes that we do, a whole library there to have. And I would love to help you and support you on this because the while the therapeutic quality of the oils is really, really important, and that's why I love doTERRA, so is the support. So when people get started, we set up Zoom virtual calls with you. I show you how to make roller blends. I show you how to use your oils, all of those things. It's so, so important. We show you how to use your diffuser, all of those things. It's so important. So I would love to help you with that. Tomorrow, I will post in this group a Lime kit. So it's gonna be a two day flash sale that I will put out if anybody's interested in getting started because really we can have all the information and the knowledge, but until we're putting that into action, we're not gonna see results. We have to take action on this and start implementing some of those things. So I will put that together, post it there. It will be a two day flash sale if anybody's kind of interested in that to just kind of reward you for getting started and taking that next step, step and supporting yourself because we talked mainly about supporting ourselves on kind of the physical realm with the oils, but there's a whole emotional piece that we didn't even get to touch on. So things to think about. And then we have our giveaway. So the giveaway is gonna include the pain roller that we made. And then thank you, thank you to Aroma Tools for all of this good stuff. So they've given us a lot of things, actually a keychain. So I love the travel keychains 
which are really, really great because you can carry your oils with you. And this was really helpful to have on hand. Like if you're traveling or out and about uh, wintergreen, like I've mentioned, has saved me many times, um, past tense, some of those things. So to have these on hand is really, really great. And oh, thank you so much, Lori. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I I'm, I'm really want to empower people and share. And, you know, we go through these things and I, I kind of think of myself as a wounded healer. And I've learned so much on this journey. It's been a long journey with my health. And if I can help somebody else in the process, that's, that's what it's all about, right? Um, so they gave us a fun pen, some really cool measuring spoons. So cooking with your essential oils, some really neat essential oil recipe, little, uh, recipe cards. So there's some for um, sore muscles, for face wash, like homemade stuff. Because again, with Lyme, with any health challenge or things, it's a lifestyle change, decreasing our toxic load, especially in Lyme, we're talking about all the time, like detox, detox, detox. And we have to think about what we're putting on our skin, putting in our body, using on our home. Because if we're adding in more endocrine disruptors, that's making the body have to detox even more. So I love incorporating these, um, a fun little pad to take notes. There are some fun um, little recipes on here, a little recipe handout. There's an essential oil coloring book, which is really cool. And then we have um, some other stuff. So this is gold right here, guys. This bookmark goes through all of the blends and the single oils, and it kind of, um, mentions them for you. So this can be like confusing to people. So this is a really great bookmark. And then there's even coupons here so that you can snag some things. So this is a really, really cool um, bundle. All of these things will be in the giveaway. So all you have to do is comment below on this video and have that on hand. Just any learning comment that you've learned from this class will enter you into the giveaway. We will choose a winner tonight at 5 p.m. Central Time. I'll take all of those comments, put them into a randomizer. Um, this is just gonna be for US only. Sorry to our UK and Canada and Australian friends. Um, but all of these goodies, coming at you to somebody, some lucky winner. So just post a learning comment below. It'll get you entered there. I hope you guys found this helpful. The replay will be up in our private group for two weeks. So you can watch it as many times as you want. Go back and look at this information and have that there. And again, please reach out to me if you are interested in getting started. I would love to be that essential oil person and mentor for you to kind of help you along your journey. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me. And I can't wait till next month. I'm still thinking about what we should do uh, for class next month. So if you have any ideas or recommendations, if you want to see a class on something, let me know. I have a lot of ideas in general. I wanted to talk about just like essential oils for oral health. I wanted to go into um, an aroma touch technique, how to do that sometime in the future in a class, essential oils for pelvic pain. I have so many ideas, so many ways that we can use our essential oils to support us. So stay tuned. I'll be thinking about that. We'll have a class next month to kind of help with that. And yeah, so have a great rest of your day. And thanks for joining and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.